certain kinds of music with the back beats, with the accent on the wrong um, beats. For instance, I want to give our viewers a, an example of what I'm talking about. If we are listening to a song, and I'm going to use a simple song like Jesus Loves Me, and I'm just going to say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The emphasis is on the one beat, okay? It's more of a march. Right? And now we can also move the accent. We can duplicate that and put it on the one and on the three. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, kind of like a child would sing it. It's innocent, it's on the one and three. All we have to do is shift the accent to the two, or to the two and the four, or just the three. Sounds kind of confusing, but it would be like this. Jesus loves me, this I know, oh, for the Bible tells me so, oh, little ones do him be long. Oh. All of a sudden, you have what, what we call like a rap or a hip-hop feel. It's the same word, same type feeling of the, uh, the, excuse me, the same type of melody or whatever, but all we've done is move the accent. The moment we move the accent from the one or three, it becomes a syncopated beat. Syncopation by all occult experts around the world agree. Syncopation is the source of occult power in pagan worship services. Really? Oh, yeah. So this is profound to the Christian. Now we're in, a, in our homes, we're in our cars, listening to Christian music that has all these beats and syncopated things in it, and we're going, oh, this is great, this is wonderful. What it actually does, just like it does to, to ancient voodoo worshipers and modern-day voodoo worshipers in their religious services, is it short-circuits the frontal moral lobe. It gets them to a place to where they can become possessed. It's called the place of the crossroads between the physical and the spiritual. And now in the church, we have this thing going on, and we call it the moving of the Holy Spirit. That's pretty profound thinking. That's pretty profound, yeah. Okay, so all of a sudden, we're getting this, our mind going, and we're getting, uh, not our mind going, we're getting our emotions going, we're taking that frontal moral lobe, and we're casting it off, and whatever the preacher's preaching goes in without interpretation. God said, no. Reason. Reason with me. So I know right there, that is not of, the, not, not of God, it's of the devil. Because the devil doesn't want us to reason out who he is, because if we really reasoned it out, what he stood for, and what he's trying to do for us, we would run from him. Exactly. But because we're adopting his things, and we're embracing his stuff, if you will, and his music, we run to him and run away from God. Is it working? Yeah, yeah it's working. It's very powerful. And so the reality is, yes, music can profoundly influence our characters. And so music thus becomes a very moral issue. If we're listening to the right stuff, wonderful, it lead me to God. And it leaves my thinking intact. If we're listening to the wrong stuff, bye-bye. Frontal, prefrontal cortex is actually what it's called, the front of the brain where your right. character is, your, where your will is, where you want to obey, where your reasoning powers are. That's bye-bye. In fact, some of the music rips it out, spits it in half, tears it in half, and stomps it on the ground. It's incredible what it does. And we just sit there in an alpha pattern. Whatever the music is teaching, whatever the... Not, now listen, not just the lyrics. I said the music is teaching. Because people go, oh, well, this music, it has Jesus lyrics, and it talks about Jesus. Okay, that's the greatest claim out there in CCM, the Contemporary Christian Music Movement. The problem is, music itself has a motive. Music itself has a, an attitude. Music itself has body language. So I could say, I love Jesus. Now, what did you think when I said that? That you love Jesus. Why? The way you said it. It was the way, exactly. It wasn't what I said. Yeah. Those words are pretty, <clears throat> a good clue, but it was the way. Because I could also say this, I love Jesus. Yeah. Now, what would you say about that? Well, you don't like him very well. You're saying something's up here. That's, Why? Yeah. Because the motive of my body language, it betrayed the words. The music that we listen to can betray the Jesus lyrics. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay, so what if we are listening to music that has all these driving beats and it's attached to a genre of rebellion, sex, drugs, and rock and roll? it undermines the Jesus message. Absolutely. And everybody knows that except for the Christians. <laughs> well, they are. It's incredible to me. Okay, now.